Guys, this is Habib. So today I'm not really doing a social experiment or a prank. And by looking at the title, you guys are probably like, this has to be a clickbait. I promise you, this is not a clickbait. This really happened to me. And I don't usually share this story unless like you're a family member or a close friend of mine. But because you guys are like, you know, a family member to me now. And so I will be sharing the darkest and probably the most secret tragedy of my life. And it's again, it's not a clickbait and it's real and it's not a prank. Every time I tell people this story, I kind of get very emotional, but I'll try my best to keep a smile on my face. I just wanted to put the story up there so you guys can take something from the story. And I'm not gonna tell you to smash the like button or share this video. It's totally up to you today. This tragedy happened when I was like 10 years old and me and my whole family, we went to Bangladesh on a summer vacation. And, you know, it was supposed to be the most fun vacation of all time. And it was really fun. It was really fun until this happened, you know. This was like my first time going to Bangladesh, right? And I was like super excited. I'm really having a hard time talking because, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very sensitive sensitive uh, uh, story to me. So so when we went to Bangladesh, you know, my mom told me there's a lot of scary people in Bangladesh, you know. Just be careful. Stay with an adult. And... For the most part, I listened to that. But then about three weeks into our vacation, you know, we were just shopping in a very, very crowded place. My parents were like bargaining with the store owners. And there's this little boy of my age, about 10 to 11 years old, approached me. And he was like, hi. And I was like, hi. And, uh, you know, I really didn't have like any friends in Bangladesh. So I was like, hi. And so this kid goes, uh, what's your name? And I told him my name. And then we had like a mini conversation. And he was like a poor little kid, you know. Uh, he had like ripped shirts and I felt really bad. I'm like, damn, I felt really bad. And I, I really wanted to buy him a shirt, but I didn't have the money. But this kid gives me a candy. Because this guy was a little kid like my age, I forgot what my mom earlier told me not to take anything from a stranger. So I took a candy from him. You know, I, I took a candy from him and there was like, you know, chocolate inside the candy and tasted really good. And then I really liked it. So the kid asked me, do you want another candy? And I was like, um, sure. And then the kid pointed to a store, which was like, you know, a block way. Believe me when I say this, I did not want to go because I did not want to leave my parents. But, you know, my head knew what's going on, but I wasn't totally in control of it. I really don't know what happened. Like my mom was right here. I could have told my mom, mom, I'm going to the store. I didn't. I just followed this kid blindly. And I knew what I was doing. I was fully conscious, but yet I didn't have full control over my mind. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I don't know how it was. Like, I don't, I can't explain. I was just following this kid and I was just walking to the store. I was walking and walking and walking. And this kid told me the store was like a block away from where my parents were. But it felt like forever. And I kept walking and I kept walking and kept walking. And then the guy approached me and the guy gave me candy. It wasn't even a store. The guy just gave me candy and I just, I just ate another candy. And it felt so good. Like, it felt amazing. It felt, you know, I just wanted more of the candy. It was so addicting. And then I was like, more candy. This time he didn't even ask me, do you want more candies? This time I asked him if I could have another one. And then the guy gave me another candy and I ate another candy. And the next thing you know, I was walking with these guys. I was just smiling. I was laughing. I was just, you know, it seemed like we were a family. You know, nobody questioned anything. Nothing seemed suspicious, you know. And then I kept walking, walking. And the next thing you know, I went into a van where and there was like three other kids right and they were all smiling and happy and i was like smiling and happy and i was talking with these kids but in the back of my head it's like i miss my mom i really miss my mom but i couldn't feel it i know i miss my mom i know i want to be with my mom but at the same time i want to be here i can't really explain it was the craziest thing ever I think I just fell asleep because I don't remember anything that happened in the van. You know, I woke up and it was dark outside. I was getting my senses back. I was like super duper scared. I was like, oh my God, where's my mom? I really missed my mom. And I look at the kids 
who was in the van, but they were sleeping. They were all sleeping except for me. The main guy who was driving, he was outside drinking tea. I promised everything like I was just praying to Allah. I was just looking outside, you know, my head against the glass wall. And I was just hoping somebody would come here, somebody would come here and you know, take me out of this car. And at that time I seen, um, and I seen someone outside familiar. And it looked like my uncle. So my mom's brother had like a business. So he would go from one city to another city. It looked like my uncle, but I wasn't fully sure. And that's when I was like, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. So I basically opened the door. Uh, you know, I had the courage to open the door and I just went out and just ran to this guy because I was so short, you know, I was just pulling his pants. I was like, <laughs> I was just pulling his pants. And then this guy turned around and then I was like, mama, with a question mark. I wasn't sure if it was my mama, if mama meaning uncle. Guy was like, Habib? I was like, mama, he goes, Habib, what are you doing here? I was like, Mama, my voice was trembling. I was like super nervous and I think I was crying. I just gave him a hug. I was so happy to be with my family. You know, I don't know how I got home. I just woke up to sing my mom and I was so happy. You know, I don't know what happened to those kids in the van. Sometimes it keeps me awake at night from sleeping, thinking about those kids. I was just so lucky to be, to get out of there. One of my far distance cousin, he went to missing and his parents never found him. And I was so lucky, like so lucky to come back to my family. That's why I always tell you guys to smile because life is amazing. I appreciate life because life gave me a second chance. That's why I try to bring smiles to you, to your faces. I really can't talk right now, but uh, you know, I really can't talk right now. So I'll just, Say goodbye. I love you guys. Salam